Welcome everyone, my name is Jeff Carpenter. I'm a professor here at Elon University. And I'm excited to talk with you today about digital back channeling. Uh, it's a great way to potentially get more of your students interacting with each other and engaged in your courses. So I have experience using back channeling in both K-12 and university level classrooms. And I work with at Elon primarily with our students who are going to become teachers. So that's a little bit about who I am. Um, follow me on Twitter if you want. I'll tweet back at you, probably not during this presentation. <laughs> uh, but if you have questions, they come up, tweet at me. And later today, I promise that I will respond. So we're going to back channel in this session. So you're going to experience what, what it is if you have a device. If you don't have a device, that's fine. You'll be able to sort of see it happening and hopefully get a little sense of sort of what it is. Uh, so I, I'm a back channeling tool or service agnostic. I, I don't advocate for one particular technology. There's a lot of technologies that do it. I'm just going to show you some of them today. And the one we're going to use mainly is backchannelchat.com. So if you go to that link uh, and log in, you can use your real name or a pseudonym, doesn't matter. Uh, that will take you to a chat space. The first page it will take you to looks like that. And then you'll eventually get inside a chat room that will look something like this. Okay? So I see some of you. Uh, this is the teacher view of it. So there's a teacher view and a student view. So as the teacher, I have some things where I can see everybody who's in the room. Um, so that's where we're going to have some of our conversation today. OK, so real quick, who are you and why are you here? OK, so in, those of you who are in the back channel space, feel free to tell us who you are and why you're here. And then old school, why don't we get a few people to just raise their hand <laughs> and tell us who they are and why they're here. Yes. OK, great. Let's get to hear from two more people. Who are you and why are you here? I know, I know we're not all that shy. Yes? I'm Laura Perry, and I'm here from Davidson County Community College by way of North Carolina Angie State University in MCG. And I'm here because I'm old school. OK. <laughs> Want to learn some new technologies? One more. Yes? I'm Karen Atwater from North Carolina a and and I have been an advisor lecturer transition into um, working with faculty and technology. OK. Great. Glad you're here. Uh, so hopefully, others of you who are sharing uh, in the back channel space, maybe you're finding out that there's some people in this room who have similar interests as you or similar reasons for being here. Now, um, so when I asked that question to this audience, how many people raised their hand? It was a pretty small percentage, right? So a lot of people are not comfortable to sort of sharing on the spot aloud in front of a group of people. Uh, and yet, we set up a lot of our classrooms such that that's the main way you participate. Okay? So only that subsection of your students who their personality is such that they'll raise their hand and start talking, maybe not even knowing where they're going, when they start, only that group of students is going to sort of contribute to a lot of the conversation in your classroom. Should we set up our classes that way? Should I tailor a presentation to a group of other educators only to those who are willing to sort of raise their hand and answer questions? Not sure. So I got interested in back channeling because uh, I, I encountered this problem as a teacher. And that was that I didn't know enough about what my students were thinking. I couldn't get inside their heads. I had a few students who would share with me everything they were thinking, maybe more than I wanted to know. Okay, but that was not the norm. More common was that there was a small percentage of extroverts and maybe extra motivated kids who would regularly raise their hands. And then a lot of the kids sort of remained enigmas to me. I didn't really know what they made of most of what we talked about in class. And their peers didn't know. 
Uh, and so this is a challenge for us as a teacher. We don't know what their questions are, what their ideas are, what they're understanding, what they're not understanding, what their misconceptions are. There's all sorts of stuff that would benefit us as teachers if we knew what was going on in their heads. Okay? But rarely do we have access to what's going on in their heads. So in the back channel chat room, I want you guys to take a moment and tell me why do you think this is the case? So why is it that we have so little access to our students' thinking? Type that type of thought into the back channel chat room, please. And I'll take one or two old school as well. Question, yes. It won't let me send anything to the chat on my phone. OK. So it may be that the app is not, what kind of device do you have? OK, so I don't, that's odd. If it let you down, hmm? OK. Yeah, so there is an app, so you may want to get the app rather than trying to use it through the, a browser. OK, so anybody want to answer this old school? Why do we have this problem? Yes, in the back, please. We have classes, sometimes lots of people, only so much time. How can we communicate back and forth individually? Yeah, I've only got 40 minutes today, and there's a bunch of you. If we only relied on speaking aloud, there just wouldn't physically be enough time for me to hear from everybody in this classroom. So that, that's one challenge. What's another reason why we, we don't get enough access to our students' thinking? Yes? I, I put this on, on there too, but it's, I have a lot of students, that's particularly in the last couple of years, that appear to be hiding behind their laptop mm -hmm. and that therefore are unengaged. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't think I'm getting a lot of feedback. Yeah. So technology can be our friend, maybe, through a back channel, but technology can also be a distraction, right? So it's hard for us to know what our students are thinking if they're buried in their, in their laptops, and we don't know that it's actually anything to do with what we're doing in class. OK, so one thing that you can do with back channeling is sort of move back and forth between a front channel conversation and a back channel conversation. So I'm trying to model that a little bit now. So let's look at some of the comments that have been put to made in the back channel. So Chris said, people don't feel comfortable interrupting the flow of ideas to ask a question that might be unrelated to the current discussion. Yeah. So students often sense there's a flow to the front channel conversation. And if they don't get their question or comment in at the right moment, then they might just decide it's no longer relevant. The, the conversation has moved on. The flow is just not there anymore, so I'm just not going to share it. Right? So that's a big problem. The, the front channel conversation is very linear. Okay? It's hard to go back. Now in the back channel, what can I do? I can scroll back pretty easily. Okay? Um, so let's see another thing. Not everyone is thinking what is proper to think in class. Yeah, so students may have a sense that my opinion is not going to be something that's going to be welcomed by the majority. Okay? And because of that, if I start to get my idea out, People are going to start attacking me before I can even sort of fully explain my, myself, right? Or they might just, they might know that their idea might be unpopular and so they'll just feel a little bit too intimidated to speak it aloud, but they might be more confident to, to type it out and share it in the back channel. Yeah, I think those are definitely ways or reasons why sometimes we can't get access to our students' thinking. So we want this, right? We want all of our students raising their hands, sharing their ideas. Sometimes it's more like that. Or, I mean, sometimes we're even, we're even pretty good, but it's like this, right? So none of these people are sleeping. I mean, I think that guy's reading the news. But um, most of those kids are sort of at least looking at the instructor. But does the instructor really know what's going on in those noggins? No. OK? So, you know, this student could be enraptured by the idea just shared by the professor, or they could be thinking about, you know, what am I going to do after class, right? So it's, it's a challenge. So we have this problem of students do not have enough ways to participate and share their thinking. That, that's my opinion. We do not give students enough ways, typically, to share what they're thinking in our classes particularly if all we rely upon is the spoken aloud, extemporaneous comments in response to a question from the teacher. 
And so we as instructors don't get enough feedback also on our teaching, right? Because that's the only way we sort of oftentimes welcome participation, we very rarely know whether our students are getting what we want them to get out of our teaching. When do we often find out that they didn't get what we wanted them to get? The test, right? It's too late to intervene. So wouldn't it be nice if we found out a little earlier in the process that, okay, I thought I was perfectly clear in that explanation, but they got something a little bit different out of it and I need to go back. So I would suggest to you that digital back channels are a possible solution to this problem. I don't think it's the holy grail. I don't work for a back channeling company. I don't get a commission if you start using any of these tools. This is uh, something I think can work in certain situations. So digital back channeling can be defined as a real-time conversation that happens in some online means concurrent with some sort of front channel dialogue. Uh, many te technologies can support it. Like I said, I'm just going to show you a few. There's others out there. Uh, use whichever one you like. So let's discuss again. What, first of all, has it, have any of you used back channeling before with your classes? Anybody use digital back channeling? I see Amanda nodding her head. Okay, so we got two people in this classroom who've done it before, right? There's an argument right there for digital back channeling. Normally, if, if, if we did not have a back channel, who would you hear from? Me, probably not them. There's always more intelligence and wisdom and experience in a room than just the teacher. If you rely entirely on a front channel conversation, less of that collective intelligence gets shared and publicized, okay? So hopefully Amanda and Jean are gonna contribute some ideas maybe to the back channel chat space, give some examples of ways they've used it, tools they've used, et cetera. But anybody, just guess maybe, why or how would having a back channel help address the problem of access to student thinking? So either comment in the chat space or raise your hand and tell me. Why would having this sort of concurrent digital conversation help? Yes, no problem. Um, they are less likely to feel the intimidation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that, you know, that we tell them there's no such thing as a, as a stupid question, mm -hmm. but, they, but yet they don't, they don't want to feel like they're on display. Yeah. Yeah, so the privacy. Yeah, real. and you can, with many back-channeling tools, you can make it publicly anonymous, but have private accountability. So you on the back side as the teacher know who makes comments or asks questions, but their peers do not see. Uh, actually, so in the back-channel space, do I have it public or private? Can you all see? Okay, so all this, and just, this, this is just an example of backchannelchat.com. You go to settings, options, uh, let's see, allow, da, 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 where's my privacy one? Hide student's name from other students. Boom, update. Okay, so now, the peers wouldn't see who asked the question. So if you're sitting in the back of the class and you're like, oh, I really don't get what's going on here, you can voice that without worrying that others are gonna judge you. Yes? Um, is there a way of, like if you're using this in multiple classes, of, of saving this per class? Yes, so in backchannelchat.com, um, each space is its own conversation, so you could just create different conversations for different classes. Today's meet, you can do the same thing. Each, many of these are just chat rooms, essentially, with some, some tools built into them, uh, and you can create separate rooms. You can also transcript and archive with most of these tools, so you can save the conversation that one class has. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. There are teachers or professors who work at large institutions where they have big lecture classes where a TA might be working the back channel while they're working the front channel. Or they can, you know, they could switch sometimes and the TA could do, you know, be in charge of 10 minutes of class. And then the, the TA could sort of interrupt the professor at some point if there was something really important going on in the back channel. Back channeling is a very sort of uh, general strategy. There are tons of ways to apply it. So some teachers actually broadcast 
the back channel so it's projected next to the presentation. Other people don't want to do that. You can have the back channel be on for a certain portion of class and then shut it down for other portions of class. There's a lot of different ways to do it. So, I mean, feel free to sort of imagine how you would want to implement it in your classroom, and there's probably a way that the technology can support that. Sorry. Okay, so what else? One more from the front channel about what, what would be a benefit of a back channel? How would it give you more access to student thinking? Students were just so used to having it in their hand, and that's mm -hmm. just how they communicate. Yeah, definitely this is sort of a medium that they're comfortable in. Uh, and so you're taking advantage of sort of communication skills that they build up because of their social world and bringing it into an academic setting. So, in my opinion, here are some of the opportunities that back channels present. So, first of all, to go back to the question of sort of time, just like if we only have this spoken conversation, there's no way that all of you can actually share. So, with the back channel, everybody has a chance to share, no matter what. Everybody has a chance to share multiple times. So, all students logistically can voice their opinions, right? And even if there's not a chance for it to go get addressed in class, they know if the teacher does it this way that the teacher will actually review the transcript and maybe say, oh, you know what, last class, I saw that comment you made. It was very insightful and I wish we'd had more time to talk about it. Maybe we actually will talk about it now today because it got missed the day before. Uh, I also think, and this has been my experience, that the back channel will allow sort of different types of students to, to be stars, just to participate, but maybe be stars in your classroom. So I had a student who I taught her for a semester in a course where I did no digital back channeling, and I never once heard from her unless it was a required graded assignment. She never raised her hand to voluntarily speak. I had taught her in a subsequent course where I did a lot of back channeling, and she was a rock star in that class. She had lots of very insightful, helpful comments to make, and her peers recognized it, right? So I think if you'd asked kids in that class, you know, who's one of the stronger students in this class, they would have pointed to her. Whereas in the non-back channel class, she was anonymous to me, and she was anonymous to her peers. So she had a very strong academic identity when given the opportunity to participate through the back channel. One back channeling activity we did with Twitter, she tweeted 43 times in one discussion, okay? So never spoke at to 43 contributions to one discussion. Well, uh, that's engagement. Yeah. So uh, I also have worked with a lot of students whose Eng English is not their first language. And m not all these students, but some of those students, because English was not their first language, and they were not confident, and they were concerned about, my accent and how I'm going to be perceived by my peers. Now, are they just going to focus on my English and not my idea? Would not speak aloud. Okay? But in the back channel, they had a little chance to sort of think out their idea, work it out, make sure that they're okay with their grammar and hit send. Okay? So I think if you have non native English speakers, you may find a lot more participation through the back channel. Uh, as one of the Participants talked about students may be able to ask those questions that they would be embarrassed to uh, otherwise. And then also, you can get sort of peer-to-peer -peer conversations going on. So there might be a question in the back channel that's pretty easily answerable by a peer. It's straightforward. Student A asks, what does that mean? Student B can just quickly say, it means X. And we go on, and the, the instructor wasn't interrupted. Okay. So these are all opportunities that the back channel supports. Um, in the interest of time, I'm not actually going to, I have four examples of sort of specific back channel activities in this presentation. So if you wanted to go back to the presentation and just see some different scenarios that I've described, that's what um, are on some of these slides. So I just want, I want to show you another uh, tool, which is probably the one most people know, Today's Meet. Raise your hand if you've seen Today's Meet. Okay, so today's meet is pretty popular at conferences now, where there will be a presentation and somebody will have a today's meet chat room that's happening in parallel to it. You could also use it in your classrooms. Today's meet is super simple. That's probably the biggest advantage to it. So I'll show you what it looks like. 
you go to todaysmeet.com. You don't have to have an account, anything like that. You can decide how long you want to keep it open and then open your room. Boom, back channel, done. Didn't have to have an account. Students don't have to have an account. Super simple, okay? And just like backchannelchat.com, this just provides a place where students can ask questions, make comments, whatever it might be. And it just is a feed, basically, okay? And there's a little um, tools button down here where you can uh, have a transcript, et cetera. So this is very similar. Um, it's free, backchannelchat.com. The pro version is 15 bucks. Oh, so expensive. Uh, the students don't have to buy anything. It's just 15 bucks for the, the teacher's side. So if, if you don't want to spend 15 bucks, you can play around with today's meet and see if you like it. Uh, it's very similar. So how do we join your room? Uh, so all you do is todaysmeet.com, and then you named the room, so TLC14BC. There's also a link to it in the, the presentation. Uh, whatever you name the room, that goes on the end of the, the todaysmeet.com URL. So we've got some other people um, joining in. The, there's, just, there's not as many teacher functions in todaysmeet.com is, is the, the reason that I prefer backchannelchat.com. The strength, though, is really just that it's, it's very simple. So it's a good sort of starter back channel tool if you want to try it. Raise your hand if you're on Twitter. OK, so let's try Twitter. So Twitter can work as a back channel. It's not just celebrity stalking and oversharing and navel ga gazing. Okay? Uh, so to use Twitter as a back channel, you just create a class hashtag. And that class hashtag becomes your chat room. Okay? So you may think that hashtags are just for um, saying random things and you're trying like. There's actual uses for hashtags. <laughs> they allow you to aggregate tweets, OK? So if you have a class hashtag, then you can quickly gather all the tweets that your students use that include that hashtag. So um, and then what I, you can just use the Twitter interface, but there are also these helpful proxy services. This one's called TweetDeck, where you can set up columns that follow certain hashtags. So I would recommend if you want to use Twitter as a back channel, that you get one of these linked accounts. They're, it's very easy to set up. There's Hootsuite, TweetDeck. There are multiple companies. It will take you three minutes to figure out how to set one up that links to your Twitter account. And then you can just set up a column for your class hashtag. So you know I have edu 355, edu 450 as these hashtags that I follow. And then those are the chat spaces. So um, for those who are on Twitter, let's just sort of demonstrate how, oh, it's already happening. <laughs> OK, so people are tweeting, adding the hashtag, and then it can become a conversation. So the students don't have to follow each other. They don't have to follow you. You don't have to follow them. You don't want to follow them. <laughs> you don't want to see some of the stuff they're tweeting. Uh, all you have to do is look at the hashtag, and there can be a conversation there, just like there can be on today's Meet. Um, so what's a concern? Let's do that. Let's do tweets. Those of you who are on Twitter, let's do a concern you have about back channeling. So send a tweet that is a concern about back channeling and include the hashtag TLC14BC. So So on, what you would have to do with TweetDeck is there are various ways to archive tweets. Storify is a website that does it. There's also social media monitoring services that are free up to a certain number of tweets that you could set up. So um, I use rowfeeder.com is how I archive the, the hashtags for my courses. But there's multiple services that allow you to do that. Yeah. Sometimes it's a challenge for instructors if they're going to assign you know, participation mm -hmm. points and you're using some of these back channel tools mm -hmm. to grade for participation. Yeah. Uh, that's why I like the Today's Meet because I could download the transcript yeah. and 
you can do it on today's meet. You can also download transcripts on backchannelchat.com, and you can use a third party service to, to download tweets associated with the hashtag. OK, so what are some of the concerns? Concerns. What are your concerns about back channel? What might cause you not to do it? Yes. OK, explain. So if you're really pressed for time, you can opt not to sort of address the back channel during class time. The back channel could be something that after class you go to to sort of review and see what were questions, what were comments, things like that. So if you really feel like during my precious 60 minutes or whatever, we can't address the back channel, you, there are still ways to benefit from it just not synchronously. Yeah. Well, I use something like this occasionally. Mm -hmm. What they want to do, they want to see everybody's responses in class. Yeah. So <laughs> it takes a while for it to kind of scroll through and yeah. make sure everybody gets in. One way that you can kind of avoid that issue with backchannelchat.com is there is this, um, did you all notice that there's the liking function? So the little it, but the thumbs up? So if you have your students doing the thumbs up for, for comments that they think are the most relevant or the most important or insightful or whatever, then you as the instructor can just scroll and, okay, well, Ron Green, he got three thumbs up, so that's one worth talking about. Okay, and some of the other ones we're not going to address live in front of the class. Uh, another nice thing, um, so Jay Beebs made an irrelevant comment. <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> okay, so Jay Beebs made an irrelevant comment. I, as the teacher, have the ability to remove his irrelevant comment. Okay? So that's a nice advantage to backchannelchat.com. And I actually saw last week that I think today's meet has just added that function as well. Okay? So if you're, if, um, to, to access that on today's meet, I think you would have to create an account with them, which is free. So it would just involve a little bit of registration on your part. Can what? Phrase for what this is? What so there's, the response I mean, I call it back channeling is the term. It, it has a lot in common with student response systems. Okay, so student response systems usually involve answering a question. Back channels can be used to answer a question, but they can also be used to ask questions, to have discussions. So it's a little broader, I would say. Okay, so let's see what a few of the other tweets were. Um, so Chris said, concerns for back channeling. Certain subjects demand focus. Hopefully you aren't back channeling during rocket surgery. <laughs> rocket surgery? <laughs> Brain science. Okay, so um, yeah. I'm not a believer in always having the back channel open, okay? So I use back channels most of the time in my courses selectively. So we will have a period of class when there's some back channeling happening. It, I, I usually often do beginning, middle, end. And then there are two big chunks in there where we're not back channeling. Occasionally if we're doing a Socratic seminar and the, the point is a discussion, it might actually be open for the whole class period. But usually that's not the norm. So there are times where, yes, when you are making the surgical incision, then you're not going to have back channeling going on. I agree with that. Keeping up with the back channel can feel overwhelming to some students and instructors. Yeah. So um, again, this is why I like the like function. Okay. So probably live, you cannot process everything that's going on in the back channel. Maybe after the fact, you could more thoroughly review it. Maybe you have a TA who could help out some with it. But it, it is nice when there's the like function or in Twitter you retweet. Okay? So if, you, if you're having your students use Twitter as a back channel, they could be retweeting to show they like things. There are ways to sort of filter and get the better content or the more important content to rise to the top. Okay, we're moving on in the interest of time. Okay, so backchannelchat.com is the, the one we've mainly been using. 
As I mentioned, it has this public anonymity, private accountability function, which I think is really cool. Um, because you do sometimes want the students to be able to share their thinking without their peers knowing who it is. And with, with backchannelchat.com, you can switch back and forth. So part of the back channel discussion today, it's going to be anonymous. And part of it, we are going to know who's saying what. That's fine. You can delete posts, as I mentioned. I, the thumbs up, we already noticed. Um, so the other one in backchannelchat.com, which is kind of cool, is this pinning function. So it, just like a Twitter feed, it, it all sort of cascades. And so you as the teacher, if you want to make sure that people are looking at what you're looking at, you can pin a comment up top. So let me find one. Um, so here we have one that three people did thumbs up on. So, oh wait, wrong. <laughs> pin, there we go. So now it's moved up top. And I can make sure that you're all looking at it while we briefly talk about it. Okay, so that's another nice functionality there. As I mentioned, 15 bucks. So hopefully that's not going to bankrupt anybody. Uh, I think it's annual. I haven't been using it for a year. So I'm guessing it's annual. Yeah, I'm probably going to, my credit card will probably get billed 15 bucks here in a few months. What have you switched to? Sorry? Well, I haven't switched. I mean, right now, so in the fall, I'm going to use backchannelchat.com mainly. I've used today's me, I've used Twitter, uh, and I've used backchannelchat.com the most. And I like backchannelchat.com the most. So that's just me, though. Yes? So the maximum number of students that you can do uh, I think if you do free, it may be a little more limited. Different tool, you know, um, Twitter, it can be however many you want. That's one of the nice things about Twitter. Um, Twitter also, you might find that you start bringing in people from outside your class into the conversation, which could be interesting. Um, today's Meet can support plenty. Uh, I've never been, I've been at some conferences where there's been over 200 people in a Today's Meet chat room and it doesn't crash it. You can use Google Docs as a, as a back channel, right? And um, I have had times where there seemed to be too many people in a Google Doc and it got all wonky on me. Um, but I'm not sure if that was the hardware the infrastructure in the room I was in, or whether it was actually a Google Docs issue. But. OK, one last one, Socrative. Who's used Socrative before? OK, so Socrative is kind of like poll everywhere. Um, it, it's more for those student response type questions. So you're asking a question, and you just want to get some quick feedback. It's a nice tool, though. It's an app um, designed by teachers for teachers. You can do. Uh, you can make up quizzes that you sort of give in the middle of class. You can quickly assess uh, with the students, sort of thumbs up, thumbs down, how we're doing with the content. Uh, so if you guys go to this msocrative.com website, it's going to ask you for a room. And so you just put in, you as, as the teacher has to sign up and is given a class room. Okay. So, msocrative.com 533190. Okay, and then what it looks like uh, as the teacher, this is the teacher dashboard. And so one of the cool things that I like about Socrative is, oh, wrong way. So you have these quick questions. That's my problem. I want to go to the one in progress. Okay, so you can ask these quick questions where I didn't know in advance I was going to ask you guys a question. So on the fly, I want to get a sense from you all, which of these back channeling tools do you like best? So A is going to be today's meet, B is going to be Twitter, C is going to be backchannelchat.com, D is going to be Socrative, and E is going to be your LMS. Okay. So I just come up with a question on the spot, ask it, and you guys can start responding and it's automatic, it's instantly telling me what you all like best. So, you know, I've been selling backchannelchat.com's benefits, so unsurprisingly <laughs> a lot of you guys are saying that that's the one that's most interesting to you. Um, all these tools have some cool benefits to them. So this is just, you know, if you want to sort of get the pulse of the class, this is a great way to do it, right? So this could also just be from one to five, one, I have no clue. Five, I got this. Move on. Let's just find out. Are we ready to move on to the next subject of today's lesson, or do I need to spend some more time explaining it? And then I quickly find out from the class. Yes? So you're just prompting a question and assigning click uh, ABC. 
Yep. So you don't present the question. You can. You can. So you can do that. Um, I just thought I'd show you this aspect of Socrative that you can sort of do these spontaneous questions, um, which with poll everywhere, it doesn't support that. That's a similar tool, um, which I don't think has sort of a spontaneous question function like this. Is this free? Yes, Socrative's free. Poll everywhere is free. Yeah, so the easiest solution is you pair students up, mm -hmm. right? And so it's not ideal, but you know, okay, so talk with your neighbor and together decide what the answer is. That, that's the easiest solution to that. And hopefully you've got at least 50% of the people. I think we have a comment. But most of them at least have questions. Yeah. So you don't need web access to do this. Yeah. Actually, um, Poll Everywhere and Socrative both support text that you don't have to have a smartphone even. Okay. Uh, it, it, just too many students were in that, that time warp where it just kept circling around. So in July, they did come out with a new version. Mm -hmm. So it may, I haven't really test driven it very much, so I don't know, but that might be something they've resolved. So. Oh, and I even, I did, I could have just shown you. So if you did know what A, B, C, D, M, <laughs> E were, you could just put them up on a slide as well. Okay, I've got a couple more examples, or yeah, two more examples there. For those who want examples, you could check those out. Uh, there are other tools out there. I just mentioned Poll Everywhere as being a good alternative. Socrative, if you don't like Socrative for some reason. Who are um, STEM people? STEM area folks. Piazza is a good option for you. Uh, it's a back channeling tool that allows you to do equations and all kinds of funky math science characters that most of these would not allow you to do. So if you like back channeling, but you want students to be able to discuss using scientific symbols or whatever, Piazza is a good place to go. Piazza is a pay service. Um, Elon has a contract with them. So you might be able to talk your institution into having an institutional uh, Piazza account. Uh, and then any LMS uh, curriculum management system that allows you a chat space you could use it as a back channeling tool. So if you're like, ah, I'm really into Moodle and I just don't want to add other stuff in, uh, you may be, I, don't, I actually don't know if Moodle supports a live chat space, but maybe it does. Um, and I know that some LMSs do support live chat spaces. So if, if you don't want to take on some new application or whatever, see if your LMS already supports a chat space. Okay, two minutes. Uh, final questions or comments, and these could be either out loud or in the back channel. And by the way, if you thought I was vaguely entertaining or educational, you could help me get on stage at South by Southwest EDU. I have a proposal to do a presentation on back channeling. Uh, and if you don't know South by Southwest EDU, part of the selection process is you have to sort of sell yourself and get people to vote for you. So vote for me, please. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Final questions, comments. How do you maintain chat room etiquette? Okay, so students socially use these technologies and have probably gotten used to some behaviors and lingo that you don't want in the academic realm, right? And so you might have to actually talk with them a bit about, okay, so some of the, this is a chat space, and I know that's familiar to you, but we're going to chat slightly differently in this chat space than maybe you do in you know, Facebook or whatever. So yeah, if you're going to use back channeling, you, you will probably have to teach a bit and talk about etiquette. You, the first couple times you back chat, you will have to provide some feedback to students about what valuable contributions are and what less relevant contributions are. Okay? Um, if you allow total anonymity and you don't have that private accountability, there's going to be a lot of drivel. <laughs> okay? So um, I would not encourage allowing complete anonymity in the back channel. Does anybody want to, we'll end on an old school question or comment if we have any. Does, any, does anybody want to ask one more thing or make one more comment? Yes? Have you seen any particular problems that we haven't covered yet that, that surprises? 
Well, the thing that I didn't anticipate when I started back channeling and that I sort of learned through practice was the turning it on and turning it off and being very structured about that. So when I do a Socratic seminar and I have an inner circle and an outer circle, the first couple of times I had the outer circle in a back channel, I just let the back channel be open the entire time. And some of it was actually commenting on what was happening in the inner circle. And some of it was a good back and forth. But then they were also going off on tangents, which a little bit of tangents is fine. But they were actually, some of them started to completely ignore the inner circle. So then I realized, OK, so what we would do is the outer circle, we would have cycles. So for four minutes, you just listen to the inner circle. And then for four or five minutes, you can chat. And then chat goes off, and you listen for some more. So there, you, as a teacher, do, you can't just turn the back channel on and turn your brain off and stop being a teacher. <laughs> you have to sort of you know, be, make it work with your students and your class and your content. And, and I imagine you'll tweak it. It's not, you know, if you start back channeling, by the end of the semester, it'll probably look a little different than the way you started at the beginning. OK, you've got another presentation to move on to. Thank you very much for your time and your contributions. <laughs>